first of all, the reports of my demise have been greatly exaggerated. I'll start with that. Um, I was uh, diagnosed with breast cancer on November 9th, and um, cancer was caught early, and it's curable. And I've got two great doctors who are um, providing great treatment. In fact, they started right away. Had my first chemo um, on November 16th. It's going to require a treatment program of six to eight months with a few constraints on my activities. Most of those activities are uh, speaking engagements. I do a lot of speaking engagements. So just as when I trimmed the budget uh, during those tough budget times and we looked at our core focus as an agency, so I'm doing the same uh, with my time and the things that are important in terms of running the department. At the end of that uh, six to eight month treatment program, um, I will be back to my usual self. I will stay fully engaged with my duties and responsibilities as the Sheriff Coroner of Orange County during and after the treatment. And I plan to run for a second term in 2014. As always, it is an honor to serve as your Sheriff and I thank uh, all of you for your continued support. Here's an important message uh, for women out there, and men. Uh, men also get breast cancer. Uh, I had a mammogram six months ago, and they found nothing. Everything was fine. Um, I found this through self-examination. And I went to the doctor immediately and uh, had it diagnosed. So when I say it was caught early, I, I really believe it was, it was caught early. Um, you don't want to be part of that club. You don't get to choose. We all know the statistics about cancer. Um, you don't really, at least I did not really focus on it until I was diagnosed and now I'm laser focused on it. No breast cancer in my family, no other kind of cancer in my family. I never smoked. I'm pretty healthy. So uh, what I have found out is um, I, I advised my command staff last week and put out a memo to the department because I felt they needed to know because they will notice a few changes in my appearance. They will, um, I'll probably look better with the wig, who knows. Um, and a little change in my normal schedule, which is pretty busy. I have all the confidence in the world that uh, this department will do fine. I hope not too fine, you know, in my absence. I'm not really going to be absent, but I'm not, just not going to be there as much as I was for everything. Um, I have gotten a number of emails and letters from people both within and outside of the department who have family members or who have struggled themselves with cancer. So um, I would just say get your checkups, take care of yourself, um, know that it is out there. It's a wonderful thing that they have made so many advances on the treatment. I mean, I had chemo Friday. I was at work Monday. It didn't used to be like that. So it's, it's gotten much better, and they're much better at treatment and curing. And so um, I've a, I'm very optimistic about it. I have a great support network. There it is. I think you have to be strong uh, for the chemo. Um, considering you know what they're putting in you, um, I think you do have to have a pretty strong constitution. They check your heart, they check everything to make sure you you are a uh, uh, that, that you can accept the chemo, and they and they do those tests pretty regularly. It's going to be um, four cycles of chemo, three weeks apart, surgery, uh, twelve weeks of a different kind of chemo once a week, radiation. They think they caught it early because there was nothing on the mammogram to indicate there was anything there. And that was six months ago. And I asked the question, is, it seemed like that happened rather quick, and they said it's not unusual, which is another lesson for us all. I have a hard time turning over decisions to other people, but in a health situation like this, I turn the decisions in terms of the treatment over to the doctors, and I feel, like I say, I feel very confident uh, in how aggressive they are being. It's been a lot to, ke to catch up with. It's just been a few weeks, and I'm already in treatment. Um, I think the best thing for this is to keep your normal schedule as much as possible and keep engaged, and um, it puts things in perspective. I'm going to be in charge. Thanks to iPads, iPhones, uh, phones, you know, I haven't not been in charge since this, and I don't plan on it. it. I will tell you this, I will tell the public this. If at any time I felt that I could not 
carry out my duties, I would make other arrangements. That's not going to be the case. The doctors um, say, and I did ask the question, can they know who I am, can I continue to work? And they said everybody's different. Um, some people get very fatigued. Um, other people power through it. And so far, I'm powering through it. We, um, we lost a sergeant who had been battling with cancer for some time. Um, and um, we thought he was doing better at one point. And um, he got the news that, that it had come back. And so he was a young man, wonderful young sergeant with a family, with children. They were prepared at the end. Um, and he did everything he could to prepare them uh, because he's that kind of man. So we were saddened to hear about his loss. But you know, the stories are out there more than we pay attention to. I mean, there's not, probably not one person in this room has, who hasn't been impacted by um, someone who has had cancer. So yeah, we've had our share in the department. We have, we've gone through, you know, our uh, sadness at losing our family members within the department as well. So you know how we always say, don't sweat the small stuff, but we still do. Well, when you get something like this, you don't sweat the small stuff anymore. It's all small stuff when it gets down to survival. And what's really important? And where do you spend your time? Because I did not have a history of cancer in my family, uh, because I never smoked, I took care of myself, it's not always a guarantee. I, I like to say cancer is indiscriminate about who it attacks. There's a lot of people that are battling this in obscurity, and I really like to be able to do that. Unfortunately, I can't. And I, I, in a way, I don't have a right to do that because um, I am in this position, and I felt that the public had a right to know. Certainly, my staff in the department had a right to know what we were facing. Um, but I just, rem I, I, like I said, I've talked to a lot of people who are living this out you know, in obscurity, uh, single moms. <laughs> Can you imagine? Um, I don't have little kids to worry about. Um, that's, I, I try and look at the positive for me. Um, I'm not 30 years old. Um, I'm not a single mom. That would be tough. And I've talked to them. And so um, you, you think about how you can support them. How can you support them?